Here is an excellent photo of a secant pile wall. You can see the uh, carefully formed cylinders of concrete. You can see how they are plumb and aligned and interlock one with another and essentially form a continuous uh, almost monolithic wall. The area is below the water table. There is no uh, seepage. The excavation is perfectly dry. So it is clear and obvious what a an effective system this is and how strong and robust the system is. Let me just go through some of the features. This is the exposed H pile that was cast into the secondary hole and the concrete in this area has been removed in order to get at the H piles and install rock anchors. So this is a very nice illustration of a pair of rock anchors. It's uh, one on either side of the H pile which is a nice way to do this. And rock anchors as I've said before are extremely helpful because they free the site of any pipe struts or any bracing and they give you this unobstructed area to construct your new structure. Also the rock is very high. This is the exposed rock and this is the exposed rock. So you don't have to go very far in order to um, be in rock. In other words this this rock anchor is uh, not very deep. It, it doesn't need much penetration in the rock in order to achieve a high capacity. By contrast, if you wanted to install rock anchors way up here to uh, hold back this, uh, this upper whaler, that rock anchor would have to travel this whole distance to get down in the rock. So what you see here is a carefully thought out plan where at the upper level this whaler is supported by a conventional brace that goes across the excavation. Then there's a system of whalers at a somewhat lower level and they also have braces that go across the excavation. And then beyond that it's a freestanding wall until you get down to the lowest level which is supported by these rock anchors. So this is not unusual to find this combination of techniques. The rock anchors, because they are down at the bottom, close to rock, they're relatively short and less costly. Up at the higher elevations, a conventional whaler and cross lot bracing is perfectly appropriate. So this is a carefully thought out solution which combines the best features of the different techniques. I'd like to talk about production rates. We have been looking at two different projects and I would say the average production rate is one secant pile per day. The piles varied in length uh, in the original project, the one where we saw the videos, they were about 60 feet long. And one pile per day I think is a good rate that you can use. The piles are approximately three feet in diameter but because of the overlap they don't develop three feet of wall. It might be more like two and a half feet of wall. And a good uh, plug number to use for a cost would be $150 per square foot of secant pile wall. Now the piles illustrated here are uh, supported on rock. The rock is very high and the piles are actually perched on the rock. 
when you see a condition like this, the tip of that pile has to be anchored into the rock, and the cost and the time consumed developing that uh, anchorage detail are significant. So when I say that you can accomplish one secan pile per day, that does not include any extra work that would be involved, such as the case here where you would have to anchor or somehow connect the tip of the pile to the bedrock. This is another illustration on the right hand side. You have a wall constructed of uh, secan piles. You can see the upper level of uh, bracing. Here's the whaler. And the cross slot braces are these pipe struts. Somewhat unusual, the left hand side actually braces against an existing subway tunnel and this is a live tunnel with uh, traffic in it, but by distributing the loads and bracing against, in this instance, the roof of the tunnel and down here the invert of the tunnel, this can be very safely done. And it was done very effectively here. Now I, I want to uh, zero in on this area and talk about load transfer. As you excavate down, the load comes on the support system, whatever it is, and it, the support system is likely to move a small amount as the load comes onto it. The whalers are likely to deflect, the pipe struts can compress, a certain amount of movement is uh, unavoidable. Now to overcome this, you actually preload the strut. So there's a little shelf here, you can see this shelf, I hope, and resting on top of the shelf is a hydraulic jack. You place a jack on this and then you jack against the whaler. By jacking against the whaler, you transfer the load into the strut and take out any sloppiness that occurs. You're now pushing the whaler hard up against the support wall, you're compressing the strut, you're taking the deflection out of the whaler, and you do this by means of a pair of these jacks. There's obviously one on the other side of the pipe. When you finish doing this, you will have likely created a little gap, and uh, I hope you can see that there's a plate in here which has been inserted to uh, fill, fill that gap. So you preload the strut and then you shim out that space, you drive wedges if necessary, you weld it, you do what you need to do in order to lock the load into the strut. Now this is a typical uh, method for deep excavations. It's not at all exclusive to secant pile walls, but the need to do this arises in uh, any system you're using where you want to preclude any movement to the sidewall. And of course that's always extremely desirable. Now that concludes our presentation on secant pile walls. The next class, which will be the last class in supportive excavation, will be on the construction of slurry walls.